How's it going everybody? The purpose of today's video is to discuss the overstroke switch and the interrupt switch. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to actually take the engine bracket, um, this engine bracket off, and we're going to look at it. Um, you don't have to take yours off per se, but it's important to understand how your engine bracket works in your configuration because it did vary in, in certain years um, compared to the one you're seeing here. So in order to understand how yours is supposed to work, because remember they don't all work the same, okay? It's important to understand that. So as you're trying to get your ESA to work, you need to know how your specific application of ESA is going to work. So when you go to start troubleshooting all this, you know um, to what extent you need to, you know, troubleshoot, okay? So let's look at this, this specific engine bracket and we'll, we'll talk about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and remove um, the two uh, cables on top and bottom here. Okay, so I got it all loosened up. Let's take this off here. All right, so the point of this part for the viewers that are watching this is we need to understand the um, interrupt switch. And the interrupt switch rides on this guy right here. So when you're looking at your engine bracket and you're saying to yourself, how is mine supposed to work in terms of the ESA system? Because remember, ESA system works in harmony with um, you know, the rest of your shifting. So you need to know at which point is the ESA supposed to engage. So here's what we know. Um, this is your interrupt switch. All right, here it clicking. Just remember from prior videos, this interrupt switch is a normally open switch. And then this overstroke switch is a normally closed switch. So just to give everyone a quick reminder, I've got my um, voltage uh, multimeter hooked up to it. So just give everyone a quick reminder when um, the overstroke is pressed, we have connectivity. All right, so what that means is ESA, go ahead and engage. When your overstroke, sorry, your interrupt switch, that's the one that rides here on this engine bracket. If you notice on your engine bracket, yours may be different from mine. Pay attention to this because this is the most important part, is when that interrupt switch touches here, it's supposed to disable your overstroke. So just to give you an example, you press, right, I'm pressing the interrupt and pulling and nothing happens. So that's supposed to happen in certain cases uh, based on design. And why that is, it's uh, it's really kind of up to OMC and it's, it's really kind of dependent on your year, make and model. These are gonna be different, some people's um, reverse overstrokes are, are going to work and some, some forwards as we'll see here in a little bit uh, in terms of the ESA are not, not going to be engaged uh, and, that's, and that's going to be because of this little tab right here. Okay, So just remember as your interrupt switch is being engaged by this little tab here, this is not going to fire, meaning your ESA system is not going to turn on. So now that you've had a good view of what the interrupt switch does to your overstroke, let's put it all back together and um, take a look at a few things. Okay. So as I'm putting the engine bracket on, just notice how I put some uh, marine grade uh, grease back on there. And that kind of helps with this motion. So take a look again here. Do you hear the interrupt switch engaging? And that's that's what I was referring to before is understanding what exactly is happening with the overstroke, or sorry, the interrupt switch, because at certain points in time, this overstroke switch is gonna get disabled. All right, so once again, I'll go ahead and put everything back together and then let's let's take a look. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to show you something real quick. I've got the uh, shifter set up right. 
we use the uh, proper engine alignment, or sorry, I say engine alignment, uh, shift cable alignment tool. That's this little guy. Uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, it's six and a half inches, uh, six and a half inches from the trunnion um, all the way to right there. So that's that's your standard uh, go by marks. Just in case you're wondering. All right, so we've got our other control cable up here, and I'm going to show you real quick. I have I have someone helping me do this, so can kind of help demonstrate. And I also have the uh, connectivity tester in place here, the multimeter. Uh, this way you can kind of see what's going on as the operation is taking place. And like I said, we were just talking about that interrupter tab on the bracket. All right, so right now, listen, you can let's see if I get in there. And you can hear it uh, clicking. Okay, it's not engaged. All right. Now I'm going to have uh, my partner slowly move into forward as I'm trying to click on this. Oh, right there. So it grabbed it. Now if you notice, there's we moved uh, travel-wise maybe about a quarter of an inch on the shift. We're still by all definition in neutral. No matter how you measure it, how you look at it, you are still in neutral. You're, you're ways away. Uh, from a forward gear. Now, the reason I, I stopped right there is because look, now your overstroke switch is disabled. No matter what happens from here on out, that overstroke switch will not engage, meaning your engine will not, um, in my configuration, slow um, or engage the ESA system. It will not. Because, like I said, that bracket that little tab that's sticking out on this engine bracket has now effectively disabled this. And that's at a quarter of an inch of travel while we're still in neutral. So what does that mean? Is it Does that mean the ESA system is, isn't supposed to work in forward? In my, in my case, that would be correct. Uh, OMC says that you're supposed to run your idle somewhere between four to 600. Given this engine bracket is not configured for ESA to engage in a forward gear, uh, your best bet is to have this thing idle somewhere between four or 500. You could probably do 600, which is what I had set this at before, and it's all right. But for longevity purposes, you want to do um, probably around four to 500 if you can if you can deal with that. So let's swing around. Let's get a, another angle. Um, let's go ahead and put it back in neutral. Let's show a different angle here and. This is gonna show you specifically, let's go ahead and zoom in. There's that tab again. I'm gonna reach under and see if I can get that overstroke. Or sorry, the I, I keep getting it mixed up. The interrupter switch, that's the one at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna have my partner slowly put it into forward. Done, okay, quarter quarter inch of travel and you can no longer use the ESA system in a forward gear. So what does that tell you for you? I'll just go over that again. Don't expect ESA to be engaging while in a forward gear. So what she's going to do now is let's, let's flip around and let's watch the overstroke switch as she puts it back in neutral. All right, it kind of fumbled a little bit, but we're gonna do a full um, iteration of forward. Go ahead. All right, so some people see this and they say that's wrong. It doesn't really matter. What It doesn't matter at all what that is. Why, why is because we talked about this already. That interrupter is currently engaged and it's engaged during the full travel of first all the way to the very end of first meaning you know wide open throttle in forward this thing is completely disabled weird right i mean why why do they have that it's kind of hard to say that's why i say you know depending on your specific model you need to you need to check that out yourself because that, this is what could affect different people's application of how they're trying to configure ESA. You may be beating your head all day 
thinking that ESA is supposed to work in forward and reverse, when in fact it never was designed to in the first place. So we got a good view. Um, go ahead and put it slowly back into neutral. All right, see that? Now watch. Let's see. Let me get my connectivity tester put back in. All right, see, now it's off the little bracket right there. So let's do, uh, let's put it back in forward gear. Just a little bit, a quarter, oh, mm, right there. Yeah, see, once the interrupter switch is engaged, this thing ain't working in forward. So think about that. ESA in this configuration, and maybe in yours, is not supposed to work in a forward position. All right, so you need to, you need to think about that. Um, now we know about forward, right? ESA is not gonna work, not gonna happen. Let's go to neutral, let's talk about reverse. Let's see what happens in reverse. All right, before I give it away, I'm gonna turn my multimeter off. And let's look at the stroke of the engine bracket. All right, remember our tab that works on the interrupter is right there. So um, go ahead and slowly put it in reverse. Did you notice that? The interrupter goes nowhere near, or that, sorry, the tab right there never goes anywhere near the interrupter meaning this design has it where it wants you or the user or the um, the driver here to have full ability to use the um, ESA system all right so you see that right that this system is intending to work when put in reverse let's change angles real quick and take a look go ahead and put it back in neutral all right. Oh, let me put, um, let's get our connectivity tester back on. All right, so neutral, right? Overstroke works. All right. Now you're going to be able to hear it just as if the engine was running. We're going to do a reverse uh, rotation. So, uh, partner, go ahead and put it in reverse. Did you see that? So, what that's telling you is the ESA system is designed on this system, on my application, to engage as you're going into reverse. All right, let's go ahead, put it back in neutral, and let's go back into reverse. See it just pop real quick like that? That's the design, and I know that's the design because you could see it on the engine bracket. All right, you can see it engage the interrupter switch and forward meaning this gets in uh, this gets disabled and it can no longer uh, do its thing the other thing you need to consider too is from that pin to the trunnion needs to be six and a half that's your go by for making sure everything's aligned on the cable side all right then like we talked about engine bracket making sure your application is correct in terms of how the um, interrupter works you need to know, you need to understand when the interrupter is engaging and in what position, so you know if the ESA is supposed to work. Because um, that's gonna tell you, you know, do you need to start troubleshooting here? But you can see in my, uh, my application, the interrupter was never designed to work in a forward gear. All right, and the other thing too here, with your control uh, cable, you notice there's a trunnion back there. You can adjust that too, as you need to kind of take any kind of tension out of this. Make sure you have a nice smooth um, uh, shift here. So that's that's really the intent of that. Um, in some cases too, you'll need to set up your ESA system uh, to pull some tension off with that black trunnion. That's actually kind of what that's designed for. Um, so that that right there is setting up your ESA system to work correctly and um, you know functionally. It, that's that's how it works. Now. Um, one of the things that I was doing in research is trying to figure out where it gets, as I was saying, um, what, what makes that ESA 
this little what they call like the W. What makes it pop like that? Obviously, you've got a spring, but if you trace this back, some people say it's the water, the resistance in the water, is what makes this spin on the trunnion. That's incorrect. It actually is your detent. So what's? Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus here. That that ball lives in the middle of this detent, and as you're sliding it into gear, the resistance of it going up this hill is what essentially makes this thing turn like that. That's that's where you get that initial um, jerking motion of, of this wanting to twist. And that, that resistance doesn't come from the water. It comes from it running up this ramp. Um, if you have the uh, newer design, which I do, it, it, it's actually um, a little less of a bump. But you'll notice they still have to have, they can't have a smooth ramp up and smooth ramp down because your ESA system would never work. That's why if you notice they always have to have some sort of uh, detent in the middle so it, it creates that resistance to make it pop like that. In my case it um, it pops in reverse and that's it. So let's let's do this one more time. Let's uh, let's look at functionality of this thing moving into a forward gear. Okay. So let's let's go into a forward gear. All right, you'll see ESA is disabled the entire time, cannot be used, overstrokes disabled completely. Let's go back into neutral. Okay, what's, uh, so now we're in neutral. All right, let's, let's show one more time. Let's go into a reverse gear. All right, see it pop like that? So that's it, everybody. Just remember when you're, when you're looking at this and you're trying to diagnose how is my ESA system supposed to work, note the, the main thing to remember is your engine bracket on that uh, interrupter is that interrupter engaged and at what point is it engaged because as it is engaged as you know as we talked about that overstroke switch will never work so just think you know it's it's not too bad I've seen uh, different models have different engine brackets set up so your flavor may differ a little bit but if you're wondering how it's supposed to work that functionality is going to come from this little bracket right there. All right. Okay, everybody. So I hope this video helped. That is how your ESA system is going to work. That's how it's successfully going to work. If you're having issues with some of the testing, um, remember they do have a new interrupter switch you can buy. You can get a new overstroke switch if needed. They do have new springs as, as needed as well. So those springs are replaceable. Make sure you have adequate grease on your engine bracket um, right there. And then uh, make sure you put a little grease right there as well. All right, everybody. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, ESA completely explained through and through. Just remember uh, what we wa uh, walked through in this video. Remember, subscribe. Leave any comments. Have a good one.